Conclusion A recap of all that we covered during this session. We first discussed certain basic terms like current asset, current liabilities, working capital, current ratio. We understood the concept of liquidity, direct costs, indirect costs or overheads, gross profit margin and accounting standards. Frankly, these were actually briefly discussed since all these concepts would be taken up at a more advanced level. We then moved on to the business flow where we had the purchase market on the one side and the sales market on the other side. How materials are purchased, kept in a stores, from the stores they go to the production area or shop floor area, then they move into a warehouse when they are completed as finished goods, they are sold, money is generated in the sales market, the same money is then used to purchase materials. What are the types of inventories? We said would be finished goods in the case of both a trader and a manufacturer. We have work in progress, goods in the process of production for sale. We have raw materials. As also we have maintenance supplies. While we have maintenance supplies, which includes nuts, bolts, tools, etc. to run machinery, specific machinery spares, which are not frequently used, spares which can be used only with a particular machinery, would not be a part of inventory. They become a part of the machinery, a part of the non-current asset, a part of the fixed asset. Next. We discuss the relevance of inventory valuation. Why inventory valuation? We said inventory valuation was in order to ascertain the true profit, in order to know the true financial position since inventories appear in the balance sheet, in order to know the liquidity and in order to comply with law. It was a statutory compliance. While we discussed the importance of inventory valuation in ascertaining profits, we also discussed the matching concept where the cost is matched with the revenues. Revenues are matched with the costs. Sales is matched with the cost of goods sold. We looked at the effect of increase and decrease of inventory. If closing stock is overvalued, profit is overvalued. If closing stock is undervalued, profit is undervalued. But the effect of opening stock was just the reverse. Opening cost is a opening stock is a part of cost of goods sold and higher the opening stock, lower the profits, lower the opening stock, greater the profits. We also converted the trading account into an equation, a very very important equation being that cost of goods sold is equal to opening stock plus purchases plus direct cost minus closing stock. We also understood the gross profit margin, gross profit margin which is usually expressed as a percentage of sales but could also be expressed as a percentage of cost of goods sold. We understood the interrelationship because gross profit is equal to sales minus cost of goods sold. 
We then moved on to the basis of inventory valuation, which was basically cost or NRV, whichever is lower. This was in accordance with the concept of conservatism, wherein we recognize, we provide for any anticipated losses, but we recognize profits only when actually realized. Purchase cost, we discussed also the components of a purchase cost. What is included and what is excluded when we arrive at a purchase cost. Then the different methods of inventory valuation, we discussed FIFO, LIFO, average price, weighted average price, standard cost, and adjusted selling price as also specific identification cost. The FIFO and the weighted average cost methods are the most accepted and most commonly used methods of inventory valuation. LIFO and average price method is not in fact allowed by the accounting standards. We also saw the format of a store's ledger card. The example was on the basis of the first in first out basis of inventory valuation. We briefly touched upon accounting records versus cost records the financial books and the cost books. How control over inventory is maintained through cost records. We then moved on to the inventory record system where we said there were two types of inventory record system. One was periodic or physical wherein we counted stock, assigned a value and arrived at the closing stock of inventory. And the other system was the perpetual inventory system. Perpetual or continuous wherein records are kept, wherein a balance of inventory is ascertained after every receipt and after every issue of inventory. Therefore, we know the value of stock at any point in time by looking at the stock records. These records are the store's ledger, a format of which we seen during our discussion. Finally, we came to stock taking, which is nothing but the physical verification of stock. The fact that sometimes in order to count stock, physically verify stock, we need to close down a business for a couple of days or for that period of time. Also, physical verification may not take place exactly on the date of closing. It may be a few days before or a few days after, in which case suitable adjustments are made in order to arrive at the value of stock as on the date of closing of the books of account. Thank you.